Hello guys, Mr. Your Fluffy Pants here. Today guys, another video. Today guys, I'm reviewing Spider-Man No Way Home, which came out this past weekend. By the time you're seeing this, it'll probably be going into next week, but uh, I just kind of want to get my thoughts on because I haven't really got my thoughts on some recent, you know, movies I've seen like, you know, Eternals and whatnot, but um, yeah, so first of all, for non-spoilers, I'm literally just going to say, if you want to, if you're thinking about seeing it, just go see it. Um, I know most likely if you're watching this video, you probably already seen it, so kind of want to just go and get into some spoiler stuff, but uh, I'll probably give it a 9.5 out of 10 for the people that I, I guess are here for non-spoilers, even though I really doubt that's any of y'all, but um, now getting to specific stuff, like for spoilers, so if, like I, if you haven't seen it, go away now, but first of all, uh, just some preconceived stuff going into this movie. I was honestly pretty worried for this movie, honestly, just from like, I was worried that, you know, fan speculation and everything is just going to get people all like disappointed. So I was kind of looking at this movie as being like cautiously optimistic about it. And I'm really glad I looked at it that way because then, like, the reviews started get, coming out. It had, like, a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes for, like, days. And I think now it's, like, 94 certified fresh. And it goes between 94 and 95. But, um, yeah, and I was like, okay, so this is actually, like, you know, like, a really good movie. Which I was kind of surprised about because they're juggling, like, honestly, this is probably, since Endgame, the most stuff uh, in Infinity War, the most stuff I've ever seen, like, a Marvel movie juggle. Because, like, they, you know, you got the storyline between, you know, like, Tom Holland uh, trying to fix all of the uh, Sam Raimi versus villains. You got to bring Toby and Andrew in there. Uh, you got the whole multiverse thing, the whole stuff with Doctor Strange. And, honestly, I just did not think they were going to be able to do it. But, honestly, I'm... I was shocked, like, this is definitely my favorite Spider-Man movie now, like, like, it's just, it feels like the most Spider-Man-iest movie, like, I've ever seen, too, especially, like, the whole ending and everything, like, this movie is honestly just insane, though, but, like, okay, first of all, the bridge fight sequence with Doc Ock is amazing, I love how, you know, they actually ended it, you know, with, like, his nanotech getting controlled or whatnot, Alfred Molina and, um, uh, William Defoe, oh, my God, they are so good, especially William Defoe, like, I am actually was, like, terrified of him in this movie, especially, like, uh, you know, like, the, uh, whenever Peter's just, like, punching him, he's just, like, laughing maniacally, which, that apartment fight sequence, that was a pretty sweet fight, you know, where Aunt May dies or whatnot, which, uh, you know, was definitely very sad, like, the way they did it, it was just very brutal, then, you know, like, when, uh, uh, Green Gom's, like, holding Peter, and, uh, he, he's telling Aunt May to run or whatnot, honestly, like, the, the whole death scene was just, like, Ah, uh, but, you know, I had, I knew she was going to kind of die just from, you know, some people from, like, whenever the first trailer released, it was just a fiery part, and they're like, and then you see Happy Hogan kind of looking sadly, and they were like, yeah, I'm pretty sure Aunt May dies right here, and yeah, that's exactly what happened, but, um, also, the Doctor Strange fight was amazing also, but also the Daredevil cameo at the beginning was really cool, uh, you know, kind of ties it with th that same week's episode of Hawkeye, you know, finally confirming Kingpin from the Daredevil show, which I still have not watched, but I don't know if the show's gonna be canon or it's just gonna be kind of like a soft reboot into the MCU, we'll have to see about that, but uh, you know, like I said, I really, I honestly like how they brought all, you know, all the villains back, and all their, all the villains' interactions together were just so cool, um, the Electro Sandman fight, that was pretty cool with the, you know, the black and gold suit or whatnot, but, and, uh, I also like the whole part of, um, like I said, Green Gom's just absolutely terrifying, but, uh, then, like, the whole part where Peter brings, uh, all the villains to, like, Happy's apartment to kind of, like, fix them, and, you know, they actually, like, help Doc Ock or whatnot, I thought that was really cool, and, you know, they start helping, but then, uh, Peter's spidey sense just starts tingling or whatnot, and then, you know, the whole reveal Green Gom, and I was like, oh, crap, because even, like, when, uh, you know, he wanders in, uh, the feast facility of Aunt May, I, and, like, you know, she was, like, he's just a broken man. I honestly did start kind of feeling bad for him, because he honestly even, like, tricked me in the movie, which, you know, is saying a lot. No, it's not, but, um, you know, honestly, especially, uh, you know, Aunt May kind of instills that into Peter, and then the fact that he gets kind of bitter, just like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Andrews, uh, Peter said after Gwen Stacy's, uh, died, he started, you know, not pulling his punches or whatnot. Also, funny stroke in the movies when, An uh, Andrew says Toby looks like a cool youth, uh, pastor or something. Funny joke in my opinion, but, you know, their introduction, honestly, I thought was, um, <coughs> excuse me, I thought it was, uh, really well done, you know, with, uh, the portals with Ned or whatnot, um, especially whenever you see, uh, you hear him, uh, I wish I could see Peter Parker, the portal opens up, I was like, what's Peter doing in the alley, and then you see him kind of, like, kind of, like, look after they say, after they start yelling Peter, and you start seeing him run up, I was like, oh, yeah, and then he comes through and whatnot, also just 
Peter's, uh, or Tom Holland, Andrew, and Toby's interactions together are just perfect. Honestly, Andrew, I love him so much. He's just, he's just like, I love you guys so much. He's just awesome throughout the movie. Their interactions, you know, with, like, Toby having the organic web shears from his body and everything was just excellent. Them working in, like, the school lab together or whatnot was just awesome. Also, some of the like, straight up, like, sad scenes are, like, really sad. Like, after Aunt May dies, you know, you see Peter, like, in the snow or rain or whatnot, looking at the, uh, the Daily Bugle, like, and also Daily Bugle and J. Jonah Jameson in this movie just perfectly complimented it. Like, you know, after Aunt May dies and, you know, that even stacks more onto his guilt and, like, it's that one international poster or whatnot. It's just so, such a beautiful shot or whatnot. And then you see uh, him on the school or whatnot, uh, crying. You can just really tell it, like, tore a hole in him with Aunt, when Aunt May died because, you know, that was really the only person he had. He had Uncle Ben and Aunt May die, which, you know, is really, you know, really bad for him, especially with the sacrifice he has to do at the end of the movie, too, but... Um, and also I love that shot of, you know, Toby, uh, Toby and Andrew on top of the school or whatnot. Um, that was just awesome. And then basically, you know, they have this whole plan. We're going to cure all the villains and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, you know, the whole Statue of Liberty fight, which was a, a little disappointing, I got to admit, but the, the final battle between Green Goblin and, um, and Tom Holland Spider-Man was just awesome. Cause you know, Tom Holland's that rage cause Green Goblin killed Aunt May. Which, like I said, was just a very sad scene. But, you know, also Green Goblin burst open the multiverse because he puts a bomb into, like, the pr the box that was holding, like, the prism spell or whatnot. That's after Doctor Strange comes back or whatnot. And then you see, like, uh, the multiverse splitting open all the Spider-Man villains. And also the way they explained, you know, with uh, all of these uh, villains coming back and, you know, Toby and Andrew and all that was that, you know, every person that knew uh, Peter Parker was Spider-Man because uh, of the spell, you know, he wished, uh, you know, er nobody remembered that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. It kind of brought them all through. And, you know, even like the Venom, let there be Carnage post credit scene, the reason that, you know, Tom Hardy's Venom got brought through is because, you know, even at the post credit scene of that end movie, they were like, uh, Venom was like, it's a hive mind or whatnot through multiple universes and blah, blah, blah. Which basically explains that Topher Grace's Venom, uh, Tom Hardy's villain gets brought through because, you know, it's kind of like they're all inter all the symbiotes are kind of like interconnected, like knowledge and whatnot, which I thought was an interesting way of explaining it. But, you know, that his whole purpose joked a little bit of goo for uh, Tom Holland in the future. But, uh, and, you know, I love the part where, uh, you know, Tom Holland's about to kill Green Goblin with like the glider or whatnot. Toby steps in the way and then Toby gets stabbed or whatnot. And then Tom Holland uh, cures um, uh, William Defoe and then also uh, Andrew saving MJ and uh, about to cry because you know he's been reliving that moment over and over in his head when Gwen Stacy died. That was just you know just Andrew's uh, acting was just absolutely amazing. But um, you know and then long story short, you know uh, they all get sent back to their respective universes and you know basically the we uh, the way how is because uh, Tom Holland tells Doctor Strange uh, just make a spell word. <clears throat> No one remembers who Peter Parker is, which is just very interesting to me because that's a whole lot of logistical issues and stuff for me. But uh, I thought this was going to be the same way with like the blip or whatnot from uh, Infinity War and Endgame. But they honestly explained it pretty well so far. So I'm sure they'll explain it more in the future or whatnot. But because um, I mean, they kind of explain it now if you know, like, oh, we knew him, but they remember all this of Spider Man. It's just like there's no record of Peter Parker in memory or on paper or whatnot, which. This is, like I said, very, very interesting and very sad because, you know, none of his friends remember and Peter Parker just literally isn't a person. There really is no Peter Parker now. It's just Spider-Man, which is also kind of depressing. You know, he's living, like, in his uh, little apartment now, trying to get his high school G uh, e GED or whatnot because, you know, he ain't on record it for school or whatnot, but... Um, and also that suit at the end looks absolutely amazing, like the metallic blue and everything. Like, I really want to get a good, clear look at that suit because that suit looks absolutely amazing. Or spectacular. Um, and also that the swinging sequence we see at the very end with like him swinging on the rooftop, sliding in the snow and everything. That is just like honestly best Spider Man like swing, like web slinging sequence I've ever seen. Like that just looks like absolutely amazing, but like, oh, it's just so good. And then the trailer at the end for Doctor Strange 2, honestly, my most hyped next MCU movie. I know it's the, like the next one, but honestly, that trailer really got me on the gothic kind of horror elements Sam Raimi's putting in there and stuff like some of the visuals and stuff I just absolutely cannot wait for that movie you know Wanda being like the main villain you get a little tease of Strange Supreme in there or what I think Strange Supreme uh Mordo in there with looks uh is coming back 
And also, it looks like a very, very dark chapter in the MCU, which I'm really excited for. Right, like I, I cut off there, but like I said, I'm really excited for Doctor Strange too. But uh, like I said, I absolutely love this movie. Cannot wait to watch it on subsequent rewatches. But I give Spider Man No Way Home a 9.5 out of 10. Definitely my favorite Spider Man movie now, being Far From Home, which was my favorite. Uh, Mysterio is still probably my favorite villain though, just because you know this whole movie was basically because of Mysterio. But you know that's just me personally. Uh, but let me know your guys' thoughts on No Way Home down below. Did you guys? enjoy as much as I did or as much as other people did and were you kind of cautiously looking forward to the movie like I was up to the release or whatnot and are you excited for the Doctor Strange after that new trailer which I really am but uh check out my uh Twitter link in the description like and subscribe for more check out some other videos and I'll see you guys later bye